Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com and we're doing a late night special because I just couldn't help myself from not sleeping well so let's talk about something in the news right now. North Korea's nuclear program apparently is shut down because the mountain collapsed and does it have something to do with HARP? I'm thinking it does. So I've put together some research for you today where I'm going to put this out on YouTube as well um, because I think people should really know what's the what and what's going on and I'm going to break it down for you in graphic detail. So I'm going to start out by saying what you're about to see is completely viewer supported. I hope you guys will support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash climate viewer. Um, I do all of this stuff for free, and I hope that you guys will continue to support my work. Um, this is going to be an interesting one, to say the least. So, um, what's the deal here? What's up with this thing? North Korean nuclear test, 10 times bigger than Hiroshima blast. All the links are in the details of this video. Um gets real interesting chinese geologists say north korean nuclear test site collapsed may explain end of program now is it that the kim jong-un decided to blow up his own facility was it an accident is this all a coincidence i'm thinking probably not north korea's nuclear test site has collapsed and that's why uh, that may be why Kim Jong-un suspended tests. Well, eh, could it be an accident? I'm not thinking so. Kim's uh, North Korea nuclear tunnel collapses, killing at least 200 people amid fears of a massive radioactive leak. Of course, the Chinese have said, we really haven't detected any nuclear radiation coming our way. But that's really beside the point. The point of this video is, what happened? Was it just an explosion? Was it an accident? Or was it intentional? So what did I do? I went over to Climate Viewer 3D and I made a map of this. You can check it out. Um, let's close this up real quick. This is available at climateviewer.org. If you come to the nuclear section, simply click on Climate Viewer Maps. Go down to Nuclear Explosions, Radiation and Waste. And at the very bottom, you're going to see a map called North Korean nuclear tests mountain collapse um, and you can zoom right in here and take a look so this is where the nuclear explosions occurred um, and this is uh, I believe it's Mount Matnap I think I was looking at that earlier um, but anyway these are the explosions that have happened over um, just recently the one that's being blamed for everything, of course, is this one right here, magnitude 6.3 nuclear test on September 3rd, 2017. So I just made a map out of this so you guys can see it in 3D. And this is the North Korean nuclear test site and where those explosions occurred. As we can see on the screen, we had a magnitude 5.1, a 4.7, a 5.1, a 5.3, and a 4.2, all in this location. And, you know, of course, they're saying that this resulted in the collapse of the mountain here and possibly the ability to set off a volcano. That would be horrible. Um, but regardless, this nuclear facility is shut down as a result of that. And with the 200 people dying, I'm imagining those were probably nuclear scientists working on the North Korean nuclear program. So if they're dead, there's really nobody left to work on these nuclear explosions. That'll shut it down really, really quickly. Um, this map will be available on climateviewer.org forever. Um, now, me being the guy that I am and being extremely nosy, I looked into it and over on my HARP page, you can see it here, HARP and the Sky Heaters. This is available at climateviewer.com slash HARP. If you just scroll down just a hair right here, you're going to see an ionospheric heater fact. Ionospheric heaters are a way to shoot electricity into the sky. They have many different functions. So I asked, why heat the ionosphere? And under that, I talk about the Christophilos effect, a thing that was discovered back during the Starfish Prime days. You can read all about the Van Allen belts and the 
upper atmospheric nuclear explosions and the list of artificial radiation belts that were created um, and you know how all that came to be but right in here are other uses of HARP. Um, this is Secretary of Defense William Cohen. I created this image a long time ago. You've probably seen it on many different websites. Others are engaging in an ecotype of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, and volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. Ooh, now we might be getting a little closer to the truth. But most people miss this link right here. Modifies the magnetic properties of our planet to probe underground structures. What are they talking about there? Well, directly from the United States military website, I found this little jewel right here. Imaging of underground structures using HARP. Interesting fact about that. Let me pull this up here real quick on the sidebar. Um, pull this up. I didn't have this one. Underground. Let me do this real fast. Underground nuclear. Let's see if we can find that. All right. One second while I hunt. Anyway, there's some. There's an article on uh, probing underground structures on Wired. All right. Let's see Wired using harp one second i should have had this one up before all right question okay Ooh, maybe they all right here it is good 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 let's bring that over here for you now pentagon scientists target underground nuclear mole men and what they're talking about here is using harp to look underneath iran and I found that kind of fascinating. So back to this article over here. This is from the United States Air Force Research Lab. And they go on talking about non-invasive imaging of underground structure is important for the detection of hidden tunnels and other hazards as well as resource exploration, mineral exploration, and environmental contamination pro uh, problems. By the way, we would like to be able to use the HARP facility to look for underground nuclear explosions. And that's what they're talking about in this uh, um, Wired Magazine Pentagon scientists target Iran's nuclear mole men. So basically using HARP to look underground to find nuclear test sites. What does that have to do with, you know, North Korea's nuclear test site exploding? Well, I mean, if you got an underground tunnels and you're setting off nuclear bombs and the United States military wants to take a look under there, maybe they're using HARP. So what does that have to do with this? Why would HARP have anything to do with collapsing this nuclear tunnel, making some explosions happen? Well, this has all happened before, and it actually has led to a huge change in the scientific community where they put the chicken before the egg, and they try to blame it all on just natural science. And it goes like this. Japan earthquake was in the air days before scientists claim. Now, during the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear explosion, we can also see that on ClimateViewer.com. You can go right here in the same nuclear section, Fukushima Daiichi Meltdown. Click on that bad boy. It'll fly you over here. And you can see that this is the Fukushima reactor. It was destroyed by a magnitude 9.1 <laughs> earthquake right here. That was March 11th, 2011. As a result of this monumentally huge earthquake, um, scientists said, you know, well, something's up. We saw atmospheric heating above Japan right before um, the nuclear explode, you know, the, the failure of the nuclear plant in Fukushima. And infrared emissions above the epicenter increased dramatically in the days before the devastating earthquake in Japan, scientists say. Of course, this has now led to this whole chicken before the egg thing where they say this. Can electrical signals in Earth's atmosphere predict earthquakes? 
So what they're basically saying is that the earthquakes, as the ground cracks, radiation is released into the air, which heats the ionosphere. The problem with that is that, you know, people like us, we know about ionospheric heaters. You can come over to climateviewer.com, click on atmospheric sensors and EMF sites, and click on ionospheric heaters of the world. And you can see that there are many ionospheric heaters around the world, including the HARP facility. Now, the HARP facility can put 3.6 million watts into the sky. It bounces around the globe and it lands in other spots. So if you put it all together, what we have here is a case where the United States military has a microwave of doom that can shoot beams around the planet. They are absorbed by the ground. Those signals create ELF waves or extremely low frequency waves. Those vibrate the ground and they can create earthquakes. So is it a possibility? Is it even in the realm of possibility that when Japan's ionosphere heated before the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown, as they say right here, that that had something to do with a man-made weapon similar to what William Cohen was warning about in 1997 just a year after Harp came up to full power. And he said this at a Terrorism, Weapons of Mass Destruction in U.S. Strategy, Sam Nunn Policy Forum, April 28, 1997. I does my homework. So this is really the biggest chicken before the egg um, argument going on today. Scientists will have you believe that the ground cracks, that radiation is released from the ground, and that heated the ionosphere so that this is a precursor. It is a way to predict earthquakes. But we know that there are ionospheric heaters. These are man-made devices, and they can heat the ionosphere. And since we do know that you know, these electrical signals do typically precede major earthquakes and that a major earthquake did destroy this nuclear site in um, Korea, <laughs> that it just, it has to be something that's looked into. So that's why I'm bringing this up today. I hope that people will take a look at this. Um, because it goes way back. I'm over here on weathermodificationhistory.com and this is September 1st, 1989, International Treaties and Active Experiments in Space. And they say great care must be exerted so that we don't produce widespread, long-lasting, or severe effects because that would be a violation of the NMOD Treaty. An ability to reduce trap radiation would increase orbit selection for future space-based surveillance systems. So they basically said, hey man, we would like to be able to suck radiation out of space. That way we can put spy satellites in low Earth orbit and that'd be great. But just as long as we don't violate NMOD because that'd be horrible. And then we go to how was HARP invented? It was invented by the Department of Defense HARP Steering Group Joint Services Program where you can read all about how the United States military, the Air Force Geophysics Lab, and Office of Naval Research, February 1990, got together and made plans. They, they had something called the Workshop on Ionospheric Modification and Generation of ELF, or Extremely Low Frequencies. Here are the names of the doctors and all of the individuals who showed up for that party. Number one on my list is Dr. Dennis Papadopoulos from the University of Maryland. We're going to go into him in just a second. But basically, we have a situation where imaging of underground structures using HARP, we're looking for caves underground that contain nuclear devices. We're using ELF waves to do that. And these ELF waves have been attributed to earthquakes. And Fukushima, days before Fukushima's um, 9.0 earthquake, the ionosphere did heat up. And of course they say, well, that's natural. 
we're going to use it to predict earthquakes in the future. So what's the deal with that? Well, I made a video back, this is 2014, Ionospheric Heaters, How Harp Really Works. It's available on YouTube. I hope you guys will watch. It's up to 119,000 views now. Um, and here's the article related to that. And I really broke it down because, thank you to, once again, Dr. Dennis Papadopoulos, I scroll through this thing, I show a couple of ionospheric heaters, I go into the details, but let's go scroll on down here to the interesting part on how it actually works. So you shoot electromagnetic waves into the sky, you use a part of the ionosphere as a big subwoofer. This is called an ionospheric Alvin resonator. And everybody knows my nickname is resonated, that's why I'm fascinated by vibrations of all sorts. But this IAR, or Ionospheric Alvin Resonator, is a way to create shear Alvin waves. And these shear Alvin waves are, in my opinion, the method of choice for creating earthquakes and a whole lot more. Because what you're actually doing is creating geomagnetic pulsations. Let's see if we can blow this up a little bit bigger for everybody at home. And you can see right here, um, standing waves are created. It says compressive magnetohydrodynamic waves, MHD waves, and basically they're using the ionosphere as a compressor. It, um, you know, standing oscillations of the geomagnetic field lines, which behave like strings with ends fixed in the ionosphere. Everybody's probably heard of Nick Begich and how to play harp, you know, harp strings in heaven. Um, but basically these are triggered PC1 emissions and that these very low frequency waves can be shot into space and then come around the planet following the Van Allen belts and land in different locations. So we have a situation where basically this HARP facility and facilities like it can be used to heat the ionosphere. So is it that North Korea accidentally blew up its own 200 scientists in an accident? Or were we, we being the New World Order, the Five Eyes, the Anglosphere, Auscan Zuckus, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US, UK, that the owners, the operators of ionospheric heaters were probing for nuclear, you know, the nuclear program in North Korea, and either A, they created an earthquake, and that set off this chain of events, or B, just the power generated by that shot at the mountain, you know, set off a nuclear bomb. I mean, is it possible that the very large explosion that occurred right here, this 6.3 on September 3rd, 2017, that that had something to do with it? Well, I pulled up this information from the USGS website, and that's where I got this information from. Um, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's see, copy image location. Let's pop it up in a new tab. And you can see right here, this is where I got the information from, Im uh, imagery of explosion site. And that's the big explosion right there, the 6.3. So to me personally, I'm thinking this was not an accident. Um, during the whole Iran deal, we actually used a virus. We being Israel and America created a virus called Stuxnet. And we implanted that virus in the Bashir nuclear um, re radioactive reactors. And we destroyed their reactors with a virus. So wouldn't it be much more convenient if you could just fire some electricity in the sky create an earthquake and destroy it from afar while saying you're just looking underground i think that's completely possible and that's why i'm bringing this up today to you so this article how harp really works you can go into it and look at all the details from dr dennis papadopoulos himself and what you see in this image specifically right here is that there are many different ionospheric heaters around the world. And particularly right here in this one, we can see that depending on where the ionospheric heater is, is where the signals are going to land. 
So we have Arecibo, Harp, Izcat, and Sura. Um, many different ionospheric heaters to choose from, but regardless, I'm getting the feeling that somebody more than likely shot a whole bunch of electricity towards North Korea. They either set off the nuclear bomb using this electromagnetic um, radiation directly, or there is a possibility that an earthquake set all that off and that's the rest of the story so how do they do that there's two different ways um, the old way was called polar electrojet heating and the electrojet is basically around here on the north pole around the aurora the electrojet is this big electrical signal around the north pole and they would pump electricity into the electrojet to make a as dennis papadopoulos called it virtual antenna in the sky so you heat a portion of the electrojet it says right here auroral or equatorial electrojet current and then that in turn turns our own planet into a big subwoofer which creates elf waves that can go down to 0.01 hertz and these vibrate the ground then they came up with a better way to do it and this is called ionospheric current drive icd and this allows them to not even have to use the e-jet the electrojet they can be implemented anywhere anytime in the world and what we're actually doing here is we're heating an even higher portion of the ionosphere um, i'll blow that image up as well and what happens is these ionospheric heaters they heat a portion of the sky about 300 kilometers up and as right here you can see ms waves these are magnetosonic waves the magnetosonic waves they heat a lower portion of the ionosphere which in turn creates shear alvin waves which then shoot off and do their damage that's what it's talking about injects ms and saw upwards and elf in the earth ionosphere waveguide so basically harp facilities ionosphere heaters they create virtual antennas in the sky that create magnetosonic waves shear alvin waves and very low frequency waves which have been attributed to volc well earthquakes and if you believe um you know what uh where is it at what secretary william cohen saying he says can set off earthquakes volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves this is not a coincidence but that brings us closer to the end of the story didn't they sell harp to the university of alaska so are the people in alaska the university of alaska doing this or is it still the military I'm thinking it's the military, and this is uh, an article I wrote in 2014. As you guys know, I've been really following the uh, chemtrail phenomena, the cirrus cloud creation by aircraft, and I haven't really been keeping up on HARP lately. Well, that's going to change shortly because we're going to get to the bottom of this and get you guys up to date. Because basically, HARP is old school technology. Harps on boats now. Harps on satellites now. It's it's in many different places. From an article titled "Air Force Aims to w for Weather Control," they describe something called the microwave ionosphere reconfiguration ground-based emitter or mirage. And it says the work involves using plasma and ionized gas to reconfigure the ionosphere. Mirage would employ a microwave transmitter on the ground and a small rocket that shoots off chaff. As mentioned in my previous video, yes, they shoot electricity into these plumes of aluminum and barium that come from sounding rockets. This allows them to cook the ionosphere and do all of the effects that I've already mentioned. Here's a little infographic of what the mirage would look like, but it more, more than likely looks just like harp on the back of a trailer pulled behind a Jeep. So that way the U.S. Army can pull their little harp around with them and reconfigure the ionosphere at will. It gets worse. Satellite-based ionospheric heaters. This is from a NASA, NASA technical report called Top Side Sounders as Mobile Ionospheric Heaters. And it says there is evidence that satellite-borne RF sounders can act as mobile ionospheric heaters. 
in addition to performing topside sounding. So basically, harp in space. Another reason why the United States military sold harp to the University of Alaska. The harp facility was a test. Um, and, and that is what this was all about. That's what this joint steering community, uh, committee was about in 1990 workshop on ionospheric modification and generation of ELF waves. Here's their whole, you know, plans. You can read all of this on weathermodificationhistory.com. And they give a list in 1990 of other ionospheric heaters from around the world. So Dushan Bay, Sura, Gorky, and I can't pronounce that, Monchegorsk, something like that. And it tells their frequency and power ratings. Arecibo, Puerto Rico, Fairbanks, Alaska, Platteville, Colorado closed. That is the high pass, which was moved up to Alaska and then closed. And finally, Tromso in Norway. You can see all of these ionospheric heaters on climateviewer.org. As you can see, I've mapped them all out. So you can just fly around and take a look at them simply by clicking here. You can go down and see the Super Darn facility in Arecibo, or, um, in Gicamarca, Peru. You can see the Tromso array up in Norway um, right here. Details on each one of these, 1.2 million watts. Um, and the Russian Sura facility over here. And finally, the Arecibo facility that they were describing in that paper is still in operation. Um, the one that they were talking about in 1990 was actually destroyed by um, a hurricane. But now they've rebuilt it and put it back in the mountain. And you can see photos of that and details on it as well. So ionospheric heaters are used for many things um, generally speaking most people try to focus only on weather control they don't really talk about space weather modification at all they certainly don't talk about earthquakes as much as they used to but when you put it all together um, this is a pretty effed up situation um, we can use electricity to fry a portion of the sky and do many different things with that one of which is probing for underground structures harp has something also known as halo and i'm not talking about the video game i'm talking about the harp lofar and lofar is right here lofar is the low frequency array and basically it's an array of antennas that you know basically look for um you know low frequency waves it's co it's connected to something called the blue gene supercomputer and what you get is a situation where you shoot the elf waves into the sky they pass through the ground they're collected by low frequency um listening posts and then they can recreate underground structures. They can say, well, there's a tunnel here. There's looks like there's a facility here. And these are all underground. So looking for underground structures with ionospheric heaters is a thing. Um, the fact that the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear blast was preceded by an evidentiary, I mean, there's plenty of science on it now, that the ionosphere did heat before that big earthquake that caused the nuclear meltdown so which is it is it chicken before the egg i'm thinking not so much i'm thinking that all of this cesium got dumped into the ocean because an ionospheric heater caused this and a lot of other people feel exactly the same way i do let alone what secretary of defense william cohen said he is not wearing a tinfoil hat and was not when he said that. So guys, that's that's the big picture of what I'm seeing right now. Um, ionospheric heaters, probing for underground structures, looking for nuclear tunnels, and suddenly, magically, without warning, North Korea's nuclear tunnel collapses, killing at least 200 people. And if they were 200 people in those tunnels, they were nuclear scientists. So if an accident caused it, 
then that's one of the luckiest accidents in history but i'm thinking this was not an accident so you guys check out the links in the details these are all scientific facts they cannot be denied the instrumentation is there the possibility is there um yeah harp harp and all of the ionospheric heaters around the world let alone the ones that are up in space now um as i was getting into this article is titled harp on a boat ionospheric heaters go mobile that's not it um they also go on to talk about how they're going to create boats and this is right here for, again from dennis papadopoulos university of maryland he calls it the straw man high frequency array now this is where it gets really freaking coincidental what does he say he wants to do he wants to put 20 25 kilowatt solid state transmitters on a barge to heat the ionosphere boats that they can place wherever they want and heat the ionosphere at will to do things like looking underground and creating earthquakes and steering the freaking jet stream and just coincidentally what do we have here optimal region for elf array right off the coast of north korea this is not a coincidence um, there are no coincidences and these are the facts and since this story is in the news right now i hope that people will take a serious look at ionospheric heaters as a result of this so what's the deal did trump and company order this was it an accident was it a third party just saying you know what let's go probing around in there was it the military just looking for underground structures and they got lucky because they put enough electricity in there to set a nuke off or did North Korea accidentally blow up all of its nuclear scientists? Um, we're not part of the Illuminati. We're not on the inside circle. As George Carlin would say, we're not in the club. But all the facts point towards this. We have the technology. We use it to look for underground structures. Shooting ELF waves into underground structures can cause earthquakes. An earthquake did occur and all those scientists are dead. Those are the facts and I'm sticking to it. I hope that I've laid this out as quickly as possible for you guys. Links in the details. Once again, I would hope that you guys would come over to patreon.com slash climate viewer and support my work. I will continue to work on brand new maps like the one I just uploaded so that we can get right down to brass tacks and start really seeing what's going on because this is too coincidental to be a coincidence, and I think that people should spread the word. So that's my story, sticking to it. I believe personally an ionospheric heater was involved in this situation. I also think it's a good thing. In just this one particular case, I don't like, you know, crazy freaking weird haircut guys threatening us with nuclear bombs any more than anybody else. And the fact that this is all rolling to an end right now, it's just not, you know, policy. It's not just a lucky accident. Um, I'm thinking there was a lot of electricity involved and somebody blew that damn thing up. So there's the facts. You can review them at your own leisure because I always provide the details. Um, and, you know, chicken before the egg are earthquakes heating the ionosphere and that is a precursor to an earthquake or earthquake lights as they like to call them these rainbow clouds that are seen above earthquakes before they happen or are nefarious individuals using electrical equipment called ionospheric heaters to heat the ionosphere to shoot massive amounts of electricity into the ground which cause earthquakes I don't know, you tell me. Let me know in the details what you think. Please share this video. And once again, attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, 
It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.